YouTube, Scarpads, Scarpads Domain, and Happy New Year, Happy 2023, as we celebrate with you the top 10, what we feel is the top 10 movies of the year in the genre of horror. It was a tough one, let me tell you. There's movies that aren't on my list that probably, maybe, almost should have been. And if we went to a top 20, would have been. But it was such a, a tough year because there were so many good horror movies, either in the theater or direct to video. Believe it or not, there's some of those on my list that it, it makes it very hard to choose. I know I spent a long time moving shit around my list a little bit, but then I just locked it in. And uh, another man that was having a hard time to sign this is my co host, Dylan. How's it going, Dylan? What up? Happy almost 19, was it 2024? 19, man. I'm old. <clears throat> 2024, I'm old. Can you believe that? I can't, bro. It's crazy. Uh, it's amazing. It was a good year for movies. And even shit was coming out. Even toward the end of the year, we we're talking about all the horror movies that came out for Christmas this year. At least three or four horror movies came out for Christmas this year. It yeah. was crazy. I even got things like uh, that were kind of loose horror movies, like uh, the one with Nicolas Cage, uh, yeah. Dream was, Scenario. Very that loose. That was very loose, movie. but that probably almost could have been on. Almost could have been on. And it was it was a really good movie. And uh, yeah. maybe would have made my list if it came out a little bit earlier. But yeah, there's a lot of comedy to that, too. Dark comedy, but. Yeah, I mean, nevertheless, if it had yeah. more horror in it, a twenty, yeah, a twenty-four. Leave it to that. Did you get the chance to watch it? Yeah, it was good. Oh, great! We'll have to talk about that at some point. Yeah, but, I, just, I wish it had a little bit more of the horror atmosphere. To yeah, it. but uh, I tell you, it was it was a tough year. We uh, just making this list. It took me a good solid two and a half hours sitting down. Now you know, looking at all the years' movies, but just you know, boiling it down to these. 10, and we're going to give three honorable mentions at the end, too, that didn't quite make the list, but for me, you know, for us, they should have. So we're going to start off with Dylan. Dylan's going to bring us in with number 10. So, Dylan, why don't you go ahead and tell us what your number 10 movie of the, of the year was. Um, I, Like I was telling you, my, my top five was pretty – one to five was pretty locked in. And then um, six to ten was – a little bit, a little bit harder, because like you said, there was a lot of good stuff. Um, but I ended up putting my number ten with um, a Kevin Williamson um, script, because that Peacock original never got a movie a theatrical release, just straight to Peacock. That movie, sick. Well, and uh, that blindsided I me. <laughs> Yeah, I had a feeling it would. I actually had it higher up, but then I decided to move it because I actually quite, you know, I'm, I'm a big whodunit slasher guy. You know, I grew up loving Scream and all that. Um, all right, so why did you like this movie? Why did you like it? it? It was really good, dude. First off, it's Kevin Williamson coming back to write a new script. And um, the, uh, what was it? it? It went on about a lot of the stuff we had going on. At the time, I didn't, didn't see the movie. So what's the movie about? See, oh, you didn't see it? Oh, I dude, yeah, dude, you gotta check that out. It was a really good slasher, and these girls go out to a cabin, like out remote, to kind of get away because they're trying to, um, what is it? They're trying to like kind of distance themselves from people so they don't get sick, and <laughs> you know they stay away from the virus. And they have this party in college right before, and. Supposedly, you know, um, suppose I don't really want to spoil it, but supposedly somebody gets sick and dies. And um, basically they kind of after that, they distance themselves and they try to get away from the virus. And, you know, then uh, people start coming after them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was um, dude. I thought that was actually a pretty damn good movie. I almost want to just tell you, but I don't want to spoil anybody. But no, yeah, no, there's no, no theatrical release. But Kevin Williamson script, and uh, it was a cool slasher. Uh, you know, very small. They 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 go out to a cottage, and you know, they start getting knocked off one by one. And you know, it was one of those college films. They're smoking, mm -hmm. getting high, you know, partying. But um, it, yeah, I thought that I, it really surprised me because I uh, had it, it, this was like you know I think like 
I think it was it this year or the year before we were getting all these Peacock original horror like Blumhouse movies like they yeah. um right. there's a couple of those Kevin Bacon ones. Um I forget the it was a Blumhouse one. And so when this when I heard about this, I was like, Oh, this is gonna be another one of those like very mid run of the mill movies. And then I found out Williamson was attached to it and I, I really enjoyed it. Um I was really surprised by it. And I thought, you know, with everything we had going on with COVID at the time, I thought it hit pretty hard to home man, and it had a really cool twist to it. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's very interesting. So interesting that uh, a lot of the movies on my list, probably your list were non-theatrical releases this year. Yeah. And that's a crazy thing, it, you know, because we had great movies in the theater, but man, we had great movies just oh. coming directly to streaming too. And you know, me and you, we are theater buffs. So it's like, we go to these movies day one, you know, well, for anything. Well, I'm glad to see it because, you know, it wasn't too long ago when you tuned into like a Shutter movie or something. You, you yeah. say, "Well, this is gonna blow," and yeah. they did a lot because a lot of them blow. They have so oh, many good movies. I've had Shutter since day one, bro. Right. And I they used to be so bad, and it's but they been, they're really starting to hit a streak where they're getting some good dude, stuff on the, on there and Peacock and Hulu. They're all these people good, are getting good horror films. I, I, that's on there. why I always recommend Shutter because for five bucks a month, dude. I mean, they they come out some really great stuff, and you know, I'm pretty sure we have one of those uh, movies on our list. Yeah. You know, so, all right, cool. I will have to check 100%. out Stick because that does sound like a, a decent movie. Yeah, check, check it out, dude. If you're especially if you're a Scream fan, yeah, Owen Williamson coming back, and you know, I thought, oh, he's gonna be some run of the mill shit. It was it was a good watch. Cool. Good watch. All right. My number 10 uh, is a movie that I didn't think maybe initially I was going to put on this list, but I, the more I thought about it, yeah. we don't have too many monster movies on this list, on my list at least. And one of the genres going back to the 70s that I used to love that we don't see nearly enough is the uh, animal horror film, you know, Cujo, When Animals Attack, Grizzly, Day of the Animals, all this type of stuff. And and I didn't think originally because we made fun of this movie. We saw the theatrical trailer briefly, and then when I watched it at home, it's Cocaine Bear. I love this movie because Cocaine Bear oh, brings you I back. Didn't think of that. I didn't think of that as a horror. Yeah. That might have been like yeah. Because Cocaine Bear brings you back to those ammo attack movies. I just in the bought 70s it on Blu-ray. It was like that six didn't months. that didn't really you know it didn't really uh, you know. Uh, it mixed horror, it had you know, pretty de decent gore, pretty decent uh, horror scenes, but then it mixed that with some very black and dark comedy and got into the whole animal, you know, going mad type thing. And then at the end, finding out why the animal's doing this. Um, I just loved, I, I doubted that Elizabeth Banks, who directed this, would be able to pull it off, but I think she did a pretty decent job by balancing the comedy and the horror of this movie. And and just the great you know '70s vibe we get from it, really a throwback movie to the '70s and '80s. So it really surprised me. It was a big a big surprise, and it was a yeah, big modest hit. I think to a lot of people, honestly. and it, and it, and it spawned a lot of you know me mediocre uh, yeah. cocaine leopards oh, and all this, <laughs> all this other bullshit. Yeah. But this one is actually pretty decent. It's on the documentary too. Peacock yeah. when they released the movie on Peacock, they came with the documentary. Yeah. Too. Yeah, you know, it's a very it's a very fun movie to watch and uh, I recommend it if you haven't seen it. So my number, Ray Liotta's last film. Ray Liotta, I think it was Ray Liotta's, Ray Liotta's last film I mean, was dude, that. Just for that you got to commend it, you know. Yeah, he was, Ray Liotta was, is incredible. Yeah. yeah, but we had some other good uh we had some good other good actors. You didn't even think film. about that as a horror. Vibe. I think of that more as dark comedy, you know, so. Yeah, I think it's definitely in the horror vibe. So. Kind of like a monster movie. Yeah. So Cocaine Bear is my number 10. So uh, I guess you're number nine, Dylan. Tell us what it is and why you would put it on there. Um, my number nine, which I almost didn't even have this on my list. Um, but I go Last Voyage of the Demeter, which means you both saw day one in theaters. I think the atmosphere of this movie was pretty cool. Um I loved, you know, the whole, you know, just uh, that that's always been my favorite part of the novel is you know the the boat ride you know the the demeter ride from you know from transylvania to england and i love that they kind of set this to that point and they uh gave dracula a whole different look and made him look like a creature and 
I think that it wasn't perfect by any means, but this is that type of movie that me and you kind of, you know, if you want, go check our review out. It's a spoiler review, but we kind of had said, like, we don't get movies like this very often, if ever, if ever anymore. And it was very refreshing to see kind of a old school creature monster movie. You know what I mean? Like, universe, like homage to Universal Monsters, but with a twist where they made it, instead of it just being classic Dracula in a cape, it was this creature. And um, I love the atmosphere that all the scenes on that freaking um on that boat and it's raining the whole time i just love stuff like that where it's very claustrophobic and there's nowhere for them to go because they're stuck on this boat and you know i i thought that was i the atmosphere in that movie alone is what drives that movie and i i, I thought it was a lot of fun i wish it got a 4k too man it did get a nice blu-ray at least because i know one movie on here right. still no blu-ray release but yeah, unfortunately, you know, problem. unfortunately, the movie did bomb at the theater. It was one of those that there was a lot of uh, negativity surrounding it, yeah. and uh, but it's too bad. It's, a lot, a lot of the movies did bomb this year. Yeah, it wasn't perfect by any means. But I, had, I had fun with it. You know, so there might have been a couple other movies that might that you know, like Infinity Pool. I might say that's a better movie, but I'm not gonna go back and watch Infinity Pool like I would. Right? Yeah, yeah. last words to me it was a couple of fun. Infinity movie. Pool actually was like at one point was number 10 on my list. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's like, I got, I, I my list is going to be more of movies that yes, they are great. But also I think about my rewatchability because if I'm going to watch the movie once and never watch it again, you know what I mean? That's something that, that, that always said like, yeah, I, yeah. this is a good movie, but I'll never watch just like Oppenheimer. Like, yeah, right. that, that was a good movie, but I'll never watch it again. You know what yeah. I mean? That, that's all. That's something that I. Think. Yeah, well, I haven't. Well, I haven't bought my thing. I still haven't watched yeah. it. I will get. I'll get to it eventually. I know it's probably I a great movie, that. but I still haven't watched it. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, every one of my movies on my list um, are, are ones I would definitely watch more than once. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, my number nine going to number nine is a movie. I'm not when it comes to horror movies. I'm not a. I know some people go gaga over them. I'm not a huge religious movie type fan. I do like them. Yeah. I do watch them. I do appreciate them. You know, things like Exorcist and so forth. Uh, so my number nine is None 2. Um, nice. I like, I, I really, I really like this movie. I think it's a definite improvement on the first film. Um, I'm, I'm glad they brought back the original actress to play uh, as Sister, what's her name? Sister something? I forgot. Irene. Her name. Sister Irene. And, um, you know, I, I I like the first one. The first one had, I think, maybe a little bit better atmosphere. But this started building the myth around the nun, why why she's there. I like, had some cool shots. Um, I appreciated um, the the woman that played Sister Irene. Also, the the guy who played the the lead in this as well uh, from the last yeah, Maurice, film. He continues he, on. Maurice really. Maurice up was really movie. good. Yeah, he really. Um, I I thought the whole I thought the whole movie. Uh, was well done. Uh, it was scary, I think, this time with some of the shots of the nun. Yeah, they focused and, on the nun fully instead. And, of, yeah, and they, and they went back and they went more into the lore, a little bit of the lore, setting up the tables for maybe Nun 3. Yeah. Uh, and the movie did pretty well at the box office. Uh, I saw it in the movies. I enjoyed it in the movies. And it's what I picked up on Blu ray and uh, 4K, and I would uh, pick it up again. So oh, number, number nine for me would be the Nun 2. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, my number eight, man, surprisingly, I almost did not have this on my list because as much as I did enjoy it, I really have not watched, like rewatched this one as much. I don't know if I kind of just got a little phased out on this genre because I have rewatched the movie so much and I kind of got a little, I kind of got a little upset with how the six, the sixth one ended scream six is my number eight. And I kind of got a little, I, I will always love this entire series. And I do really enjoy Scream 6, but it is so high up and I almost overlooked it. And I was almost going to put Totally Killer on instead of Scream 6. I ended up popping that one off because I still think this is a great movie. And I love the New York atmosphere, but the ending and us and those two characters coming back like nothing happened really sours it out for me where i'm just like there is like no stakes where it's like these people get stabbed and then they come back and i was right. like 
it doesn't even look like they got. Yeah, I mean, all all the um, yeah, all know? the screen movies had a certain amount of plot armor for the main characters, but yeah. you never, but, but you did, but you did kind of feel they could too, die. Like, what's his name? Jamie right. Kennedy. He got right. murked in Scream Two, and it's like yeah, you, know, you, you, you feel they could die in the other die. movies, and 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 the peripheral characters certainly. Here, there's no consequence. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. And yeah, they almost said they they make you think that Dewey was killed in the first one, and then they really killed Jamie Kennedy. So with the Wes Craven ones, there was a little bit more at, at stake, but it was nothing like in Scream Six. And I, I almost feel like people are gonna think, well, why if you didn't really like? I did, I really did enjoy it, but it was really just that ending part that I did not care for. Um, I was a huge fan of Scream 5. I for, I mean, Robbie shits on it nonstop, and I always have advocated how great that film was. And I think Scream 6, you know, continues that on. And um, if not, like, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd say it's better than 5, but it was really just that ending where they should have just killed, like, at least one of those siblings. You know what yeah. I mean? At least one of them. And I'd been there. At least, but I was like, well, maybe even a background character, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And honestly, with the way that the shit went down, it's like you should have just killed them both and like you know had it go. It'd been like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, um, but I still thought like the Manhattan, you know, bringing it to New York was sick, and um, bringing like the old school, like um, uh, the old school mask that um, Ghostface. What was it? I'm I can't Ghostface. Even, uh, Billy's no that. Oh, Billy. Bill, oh yeah, Billy. Yeah, Billy yeah. Loomis. What Billy Loomis was wearing. Right. Um. But yeah, I'd say like rewatchability. I almost like Totally Killer better than this. But like, I know I just kind of, I literally, the last couple, like two, three years since Scream 5 came back, I'd been watching the Scream franchise kind of like over and over, like in the background. You know what I mean? Or sometimes I just get bored. I'm like, well, and plus those girls are hot in these movies. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Ortega. And plus, I've just always been a huge Scream fan. And I think you is, stick Jay Ortega in anything, and people are gonna watch exactly, it. Exactly. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was kind of rewatching these movies a lot, but uh, I, I kind of like, you know, I go through phases where I'll I'll watch movies over and over again, and then I'll kind I won't watch them for a while. So that's kind of like I'm in the mood right now, but. I still did really enjoy it, and yeah, that that was Scream Six would be my number eight. Yeah, cool. Sad to see we probably won't get a Scream Seven either because of all the drama. Oh, we'll get a Scream Seven. Just might take a long. Uh, I don't know if I want it. Honestly. <laughs> all right, my number eight film is uh, one that Dylan's already talked about: Last Voyage of the Demeter. Uh, I'll briefly talk. I, I liked it because you know, as Dylan says, we don't get to meet creature movies, and this was a way of focusing on that one portion of Dracula I loved for years. Where they 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 go with the ship. You know, the, my only complaint with the movie is I wish they found a way to work in Renfield. They left them out, whether it's because we right. already had a movie because of it, or they didn't want to cover that character. I kind of almost wish maybe he he was the main character and he would slowly go mad, or at least if he was in there. But other than that, cinematography is great in this movie. All the acting performances are great. The guy that was in Game of Thrones is really good as the captain in this movie. Yeah. So he was probably my favorite. Yeah. Dracula, he was my favorite. Yeah, and even the lead, the, the guy that was in uh, uh, the English yeah, guy there. I only know him from straight, straight out of Compton, and he played. Um, but he's been in tons of other Dr. stuff. Dre. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, he was great in it. Um, you know, he. Uh, I I love the whole shipbound setting. Uh, all the the effects that they did. Uh, they had a lot of nice uh, practical effects in the movie. I just enjoyed it. I mean, as an old school universal horror movie fan, I was really disappointed I, when well, it didn't do as well because as I thought it was, because I thought it was a decent movie. So right. my number I, eight. I would have, I, I love that ending too. And I would have yeah. loved to get a sequel because it like, you know, once you got to the ending, you're like, holy shit, this is like a Nosferatu type. Right. Thing. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I love, I've always just loved that type of Dracula. Right. And, um, yeah, I am very excited though to get that. Um, yeah, it reminded me a lot of the Dracula. Robert Edgar, in, Nosferatu. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of the Nosferatu that's in um, Salem's Lot. Yes, and that's always been my all-time favorite right. vampire. That is my all. That's kind of like what they were going for, I think. The Salem yeah, Lot. Yeah, that's vampire. why I was like, "Holy shit, bro! I, it's such a bummer. We'll probably never get no. a sequel to it. No. Like, it, give me just go straight to Peacock or something. I don't give a fuck. I just need a no. sequel." 
I love that. I love that. It, and that mixed all that historical stuff too when they're on the ship. I, I just, I just really loved it. I love that, man. It was such a blast from the past and with that atmosphere of the movie. So cool. good. All right, you're number seven. Um, I'd go Evil Dead Rise. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. Um, so I was super pumped for this one because they said they were taking it out of the cabin. And it was going to be in a hotel. And I was getting major Demons 2 vibes from this. And uh, I was definitely right about that. But um, I definitely thought this was another cool-ass um, installment for the Evil Dead franchise. And it was like the guy's first full-time feature film. And I thought he did great. I thought the mom, the redhead, was super creepy. as like the Vikings, yeah, she was good. And I, you know... Um, and I, a lot of people didn't like the kids. The kids really didn't bug me in this. No, not at all. No. You know, I felt a lot of people were hating on the kids with it. I, I liked them. I, I thought they were kind of like for the type of mom they had, they they fit the profile for the ones like kind of like they were kind of like out like outsider kids, but they banded together as a family. If, if anything, the sister, the woman's sister, who's the lead, really. She was a little weak. I would have liked yeah, the scene. That would have been my own. I almost would have wished they switched those roles. Me too. And and the redhead was the one that but was obviously the lead. The redhead is just so perfect as a dead eye. Yeah, because she but, has that look. She has yeah. like the. But no, I, I I always thought the same thing because she was definitely stronger. Yeah, I think that uh maybe maybe she's just so damn good it takes away from that woman. But, I actually um, think so. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely thought it was dope and a nice little installment to the Evil Dead franchise. And uh, I'd, I'd be excited to see if we get, you know, anything in the future, especially with this being like. Yeah, the movie did well over 100,000. It's going to yeah. be a sequel at some point. Yeah, it, it was really good. I, I enjoyed it quite quite a bit. Cool. All right, my number seven, uh, going along kind of like the last one, is uh, this year's Renfield. Um, oh my God! I forgot about Renfield. I really, uh, I really, I really love this movie. I mean, being Thank an old you. school Universal uh, monster fan, um, I loved the whole take on it, where they almost like recreating those scenes out of the old Dracula with, with mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage in black and white. They did a great job st um, doing that. I thought Nicolas Cage was fantastic as as Dracula. He's just he's just put everything into this Dude, movie and the man has had a hell of a year, bro. Yeah, really. All the all the movies he's in, he gets he gets dragged through the mud so much. He makes a few clinkers, yeah, but he makes a lot more good movies and bad movies. And even his bad movies are watchable. You yeah. know, even things I don't like him in is watchable. Yeah. So uh I mean he Nicholas Cage just does a great job. Nicholas Holt yeah. does a great job uh in this movie. Uh he he was great as Renfield. Um, the woman that was in uh, what was it, the internals? Uh, no, it was just, she was in yeah, Shang Chi, yeah, what? Shang Chi. I liked her, uh, I think she fit I in this movie, that. yeah, I uh, yeah. I thought she fit in this movie, she did yeah, pretty well. I was nervous about her at first. She's comedic nervous. wise, I think she has good comedic timing, I think she's better in comedic roles. I thought she did a good job. Um, I love the whole setting with the uh, where they're in uh, where he's in um, physical therapy uh, now, mental therapy, like. And, yeah. all the, and, and the way that all plays into it. I love the effects in this when they were showing Nicolas Cage all burnt up. Yeah. Uh, the effects were phenomenal. Everything was done so well. So Renfield is my number seven uh, to go along with Last Voyage of the Meter. Um, You're number seven, Dill. Yeah, which, speaking of, before I go to my, uh, my number six, you mean. Um, six, yeah. Freaking... Nicolas Cage had always wanted to play Dracula, and it, I was so happy to see him finally get the chance. I wish he would have got, like, a full-on Dracula star, you know what I mean, where he gets to play, because obviously he's in a third of the movie, you know, a good portion. He's so good at what he's in, yeah. He's incredible. He is incredible, and just you can see the passion in it and the way he looked and the way he played it. He fucking so god damn incredible i'd love to see him get like a straight up solo dracula you know what i mean where he is the star you know um i think he did get a great amount like it's not where you're like oh i wish he was it like he barely got to be in it he's in it perfect amount but it's the perfect amount where you're like and and what a performance too. He, he balanced it where he played funny but like very savage at the same time yeah. 
So, you know, it wasn't did, like it wasn't goofy where you're like, when, he's right. when he needed to be, but it, like you said, when he needed to be mean, he was savage, you know. Yeah. So I thought they did a great job. He did a great job with that. I, can't, I cannot believe I forgot about Renfield. That would have made my list for sure, dude. Yeah. I, I I had a blast with Renfield. I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed it. But mm -hmm. my number six would be, because um, I could not believe how much I enjoyed this, um, even though I was a fan of the first, but not nearly as much of the, as the second one. And I've just been a huge fan of the look because um, they were introduced in The Conjuring 2. My number six is The Nun 2. I had a blast with this movie, man. I thought it was fucking awesome. Another kind of like, um, you know, it's a Conjuring movie, but it felt different than any of the other ones. And the way they really utilized the nun perfectly in this and did some really awesome stuff. I saw this movie like two times, like two days in a row. I had such a great time with it. I think they, um, they did some great atmosphere with the nun and they utilized her fully instead of like having her because obviously she's a demon that could be other things but it's like we are there for her to be the nun you know what i mean and um i think the nun is just such an iconic look man and it, you know like anybody even if they're not like a horror fan it's like they know that look you know what i mean almost like with the terrifier like people even if they haven't seen the movies they know right. it, you know and that's like you know I'd say Terrifier and The Nun are two of these big, iconic, you know, IPs that have come out and their stuff sells so well. Like the girl that plays The Nun has, is like in some uh, suing debacle because she's not getting rights to the merchandise stuff because it's selling so much. It's making so much money. I mean, like those NECAs and stuff. We could, knew we're having trouble finding a NECA for The Nun because they were sold out. Um, but I thought the movie was great. Like Maurice was so good sister irene comes back and kills it and i just thought all the scenes that you get with the nun were just so creepy man and i really liked how they utilized her especially that one scene when she kills the kid and that you get that all like it just goes oh, yeah. red um and she snaps the kid's neck and i was like when i saw her kill a kid i was like oh hell yeah man mm -hmm. i was like they're really going for it you don't be serious days. But yeah, that'd be and, and, and very early in the movie too. They did it. Yeah, yeah, dude. They they go all for it, man. And um, I had a blood. I mean, this was this is one of those Catholic movies. I mean, but, this believer was just such a letdown. So this would be my, you know, oh, definitely my yeah, I mean, better, much Pope, better than this. Exorcist was better than Exorcist no. believer. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, cool. Yeah, all right, my number six, number six, getting halfway through the list already, almost so. Is uh, one of Dylan already had Evil Dead Rise. Um, I love this movie. I'm a huge Evil Dead fan, and I thought this movie had a good vibe to it, very similar to the first film. Uh, you know, had some humor. It had a little bit of humor in there, but they were really going for more like the first movie, you know, and setting it in this building, as Dylan said, where the kid finds the the Book of the Dead in the in the buried basement. And, of course, the kids are dumb in this thing. He starts, he unleashes the whole power. But they do that in every one of these movies. You know, they're always reading it for no reason. Yeah. But uh, Helen Ash versus Evil Dead, he was getting a fucking blowy, and he was and he was reading it. <laughs> you haven't watched that show yet, Dylan, then you should. Uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. But, uh, oh, I love that one. Ash versus Evil Dead is great. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I like the setting. I love the the, the sister who plays the lead Deadite. The kids are good. Uh, I love the whole sequence he did in the parking garage when the, the woman does the old homage with the come get some and all that. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I, I love Evil Dead Rise, another movie that did tremendous, like well over 100 million to the box office. And I know we'll hopefully get a, more sequels and I hope they continually change. You know, because this one did. It didn't just stick in the cabin. It went there, and then it went to the lake, and then from the lake it went to the high rise. From the high rise, it went back to the lake, and it, it, it was it was interesting. It, it was kind of moving around more. Helping to start it off was pretty nice. right, and then maybe we'll get it more into the city in the next one. That would be great to see different locations where the Evil Dead pop up. Yeah, you know? which that's uh, sort of like Evil Dead, uh, you know, Ash versus Evil Dead. Right. Is just at the cabin, you know what I mean? Right. Brought it out to the forefront. So, Evil Dead Rise is uh, one of my top films of the year. Number six on my list. I love it. Uh, I want more from it. 
So Dylan, we're number we're halfway through the list here. Number we're five. Half an hour, yeah. Not doing too bad. Yeah. So number five. Right, yeah. So my number five is kind of another one of those demon type movies, man. And um, I had heard about this coming straight to Shutter, and then you actually were able to watch it before me, and then me and you ended up watching it um, uh, together and uh, had a blast, kind of bullshitting through it. And um, this is when evil lurks, man. Um, what is this, Argentinian, like an Argentinian film? It's Argentinian, yeah. Yeah, this movie was fucking gnarly, bro. I thought this movie was fantastic. Just another movie that never got a theatrical release, at least in the States. Maybe in Argentina it got, I'm sure it might have went. Yeah, because the director did one of the movies that was, was pretty popular. Ter- uh, terrified. Right. And so, that was a huge movie, another huge Shutter exclusive movie. Yeah. That's a huge one, um, and um, yeah, um, the the when evil lurks, man, it was just great, man. What was it? Um, they got these weird uh, people kind of being inhabited by these demons, and you can't kill them, otherwise it'll just transfer to somebody else. Um, yeah, they yeah. call them rottens, the rotten. Yeah, dude, this movie was gnarly though, dude. Um, I I you know you get this girl that literally stabs her takes an axe and just and just, oh my god man just literally smashes an axe in her in the front of her skull um i i couldn't believe how much i enjoyed this film i, I had heard a lot about it and i thought it was going to be yeah this is going to be but you know this is up there with like train to busan and all that you know what i mean this this movie was fucking awesome dude and i really don't even want to get into much because i feel like just going to this not knowing anything like I did. I just had heard some hype uh, when it was going to be, you know, I, I'd heard this big, you know, um, overseas movie would be coming to Shutter, And once I, you know, checked it out, I was not disappointed one bit. Yeah, I had a blast with it. Cool. And we both said that there's so much that could be done with this movie. They could go past this movie. They could kind of explain the whole uh yeah, because it kind of just drops you right into the right. World. It Sorry. builds a world, the, you know, this whole world build. How did it come to be? You know, all right, cool. So here's number five was when evil looks. Go check it out and shut it. It's a great movie. My number five also it'll be a lot of movies on this list. Me and Dylan probably gonna interchange a lot. And this is one a lot like when evil looks. No, oh maybe I'll take that back. Very limited to no. Theatrical. It did get out, I think, in a few areas, but for a very short time, and then wound up on, uh, I believe, Shutter and Straight the Video. My number five is Cobweb. And uh, to me, this is one of the top. This was like before the last quarter of the year, which ended strong. Yeah. Cobweb was close. It was either going to be number two or number one. And it kept on getting bumped down. And now it's my number five to show you where, where things yeah. ended up. But Cobweb, I think, is a great, another one of these great movies where it has great performances from Anthony Starr, who plays Homelander. Oh, and, yeah. um, and who's the girl that's in this one, too? Um, uh, oh, fuck, what's the name? Um, but she's a big actress. She in, play, yeah, she played the younger version of freaking, um, what's it from Misery? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Well, Lizzie Kaplan. Lizzie Kaplan. I mean, and then in the, 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 this movie all revolves around a child. Um, so I won't give away too much of the plot because you, we're hoping to go. You guys go watch these movies, but the child actor in this movie was fantastic. I mean, when you got a movie that's based around a child actor, he has to be able to hold these scenes, and he has some really intense scenes. Um, uh, and he pulls it off. And the two older actors are great. The whole this twists in this movie. This great uh, uh photography, great cinematography. Uh, it sets this sets kind of a world up too, and uh, I, I just thought this was a hell of a movie. It's set around Halloween, so it's one of these movies that you can watch for your uh, annual Halloween uh, movie. Fairy tale type. Yeah, it, it is. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal film, Cobweb, uh, and it really it was up high. And now it's number five to show you what 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 else came above it. But Cobweb is my number five, and I love it. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's a great flick. Hell, yeah. You're number five, though. Or number four, actually. Number four. Wow. Yeah. Um, this one, I think this one, you had told me this was, like, always 
really high up there for me. This was it, it, it's so it was right up there with me as well. But it's you know, like you said, more stuff kept coming, and it, I was like, damn, but I want to keep it here. But I was like, ah, oh, it kept getting, you know. Um, so like I like one to five, man. It almost you could almost switch these movies around it depending on the day you yeah. feel, you know. At least two so, to five, I feel in mind. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you know, um, two to two to four were my hardest. Mm-hmm. Where it's like I could almost bunch them and t- have them be a tie all together. Um, so my number four would be Dark Harvest. Um, I thought this movie directed by David Slade, the guy who did Thirty Days a Night, great atmosphere. A lot of pumpkin head homages in this. This is just a type of movie that we like. I feel like you've never seen before, but it takes some homages out of stuff like pumpkin head and um, uh, like the warriors and all, you know, some great homages to stuff, but it felt like its own thing that we just don't see anymore. I, you know what I mean? This movie was so unique and the atmosphere was great. The, the main kid in this was awesome dude and they get to wear these kind of cool skeleton masks for a bit and it looked incredible dude and the twist in this another one of those small town community movies like stephen king where everybody knows everybody and they got this purge like activity going on every you know once a year uh with the kids and they starve their kids out for three days before they let them run amok on the city to go hunt this this creature and it, another movie by the way that we did a review on go watch it because it's definitely a really go awesome. check that out um dude just a fucking awesome movie never got a theatrical release still hasn't gotten a blu-ray release and i it's think been out quite some time such a shame i mean this this movie was my number one at one point it's gotten dropped down like i said this movie could be my number two honestly like I, my number two could be tied with three movies so like even this being number four it's really almost my number two because i love this movie so much and it was so hard to kind of twist these around and like i said tomorrow it could be my number two and my number two could be my number four you know like it's so hard with me cool so that's your number four is dark harvest yeah all right uh, my number four, uh, Dylan mentioned a few minutes ago, but I'll, I'll list some kind of interchange and just drop it all over the place, but is Where Evil Lurks. Uh, I love this movie. I saw it. Uh, I think Dylan originally recommended I check it out. And uh, I when I watched it, I thought, yeah, another one of these movies and like Cobweb and like Dark Harvest, a build, it builds its own world. You know, this when Evil Lurks, without giving away too much, you know, this whole uh, demon mythology that this world exists in is uh, is different than our own. They kind of built it, and it works by certain rules, and they drop you right in, and they kind of feed you these rules as they go along. What's really happening with these demons and these dead people? Uh, and it revolves around two brothers and the acting. In this movie, I tell you, we talk about, and we'll talk about further. You know, watching subtitled movies versus watching. Uh, movies are dubbed, and after I watch a movie a few times, if it's subtitled, I almost want to watch a dub because I might put it on and I might be busy doing other things. <clears throat> but when I first watch these movies, I really want to watch them subtitled because the performances you, you get know, more into it, you get more into it when it's the original actors. And these two guys really put on a even though I couldn't understand a fucking word they said, they put on a such a great performance. Uh, as these two brothers that go around almost like supernatural fighting demons yeah. um you know without without wanting to but just having to and in essence creating their own problems because of what they're doing what they don't know um it, it's just a great movie uh it won't like dark harvest and other movies originally this was uh, way up on my list and it dropped down but number four for me is where evil lurks uh one of the movies I, i'll still be thinking about after this year is over with because all those scenes where you get some practical effects, you get the, the ads in the face, you get all the other deaths that come in this movie, that great effects, um, great atmosphere. So number four, where evil looks, great, great movie. Oh, yeah. So my number three would be Cobweb. Like you said, great world building in this. Anthony Starr is incredible. Lizzie Kaplan, creepy-ass mother. And the boy holds his own. He's not annoying at all. It's got that awesome grim fairy tale, uh, you know, atmosphere going for it. 
And I, I love the kills in this. I loved kind of like the creature in this. I, I thought this movie could be split into two movies and it could go either one way or the other. You could get one movie with the one half and another, you know, movie with the other half. And so I heard some people hating on that, but I think that's what where a lot of the charm of this comes from because you almost think, oh, it's going this way and it goes another way and it surprises yeah. you and it does something different. And, you know, that's the thing with a lot of these movies. They didn't do just the same run of the mill shit because if it did that, it'd be, we are already, we know what's going to happen. If it'd be a Hollywood movie and none of these exactly. movies And this is are. a little yeah. bit more independent, um, even though it was produced by Seth Rogen and his buddies, but you right. could, it didn't really, I think it might have been a big studio though. It yeah. was in the theaters for like a weekend. You know what I mean? So this was not a big theater or big studio or anything. Um, I think this movie has been really slept on. I heard so much uh, good things. And then, you know, you know, some people, I guess, didn't like it as much, like I said, because it felt like it was split in two. But I feel like if you see, like, once it's it's coming at you, you already know so that you need that twist. Otherwise, you're like, I already knew what was going to happen the whole time. So you need that that cool twist to happen for it to be like, oh, shit, you know? But if you don't, I get into these type of grim fairy tale movies, yeah. and I love shit like that. So for me, I was like, fuck, yeah, this is awesome. But um, and I thought Anthony Starr and Lizzie Kaplan, dude, they they're they're incredible for the roles that they were given, you know. So yeah, I I, I thought it was a blast, man. And I love the atmosphere, and like you said, it's around uh, Halloween time too, so it's a perfect kind of throw throw around, throw on in uh, October and watch it, you know, yeah. if you enjoyed it. I, I thought it was fun though. I thought it was a blast. Yeah, right. So number three, uh, for me, once again, another movie you can throw on uh, around October, another Halloween movie we got this year, and that's Dark Harvest. Dylan already talked about it. Uh, this movie was going to be number one on my list for a long time. Uh, I think this movie is fantastic. It melds like an old 50s type uh, outsiders, uh, warriors vibe with this whole uh, really almost like a pumpkin head type of vibe uh, mixed with kind of with the, the purge. But the, 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 once again, like all the movies we talked on this list, like Cobweb and like Where Evil Lurks, this movie exists in its own world and has its own set of rules that they slowly kind of from the beginning show you how all this whole thing works. And then you get very involved with the characters in this movie. I think the, the, guy, the kid who plays the kid is great. Um, I, I think, uh, what's his face? That was the played the father that was in... Um, uh, was in uh, Justify and a few of those other shows. I forget his name, the father in that movie, but he was fantastic. The whole cast is fantastic. Uh, the monster is great. You remember him? So uh, Dark Harvest, I tell you, it's just, if you have not seen this, that's probably my one I would recommend the most on my list to go see. Once yeah. again, independent movie like Cobweb, and like Weaver Lurks, uh, and it's just a great flick and hardly in the theaters, if at all. Um, it, it really rivaled up. At least. To get that high up to number three is you're doing something right. It's a great, great flick, Dark Harvest. Jeremy Davies. Jeremy yeah. Davies was great yeah. in it, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, and, and this, you're talking about, right? Right. And this is a movie where you can get a part three, or let me see, a part two that prequel. Cool. That goes ahead, or it could even be a prequel. How did this whole system get set up and go maybe with the younger version of the Jeremy yeah, Davies character? There's a lot of stuff that isn't even explained, and I think that's another awesome thing. Right. About it, that, you know, so you could you could out. spin another couple movies. I don't think it'll happen, but man, I'd love to see it happen. Dark Harvest, yeah. my number three, and, and can you believe it, Dylan? We're up to the top two movies of the year, so that's astounding. Hell yeah. So for you, that you're number two. Yeah, my number two, and this one was this one was a lot higher up on my list until like I wouldn't say high up; it was probably like my five um, until I I'd given it because in theater I'm not good with uh, accents and all that. And uh, when I went back and rewatched it at home, I really enjoyed it a lot more. But um, like I said, tomorrow this could be my number four. You know what I mean? But it's still like I said, the two, three, and four are like tied for two. But I still couldn't believe how much I've grown to really fucking love this movie. And after I rewatched it at home, I ended up watching this movie like 
four times in one week. I was diving into behind the scenes, diving into the directors who were you big YouTubers before they came out with this movie. And my number two is uh, Talk to Me. I know it's a number one for a lot of people. And um, for a while, this would have been like my number four or five. And I was super solid about that. And I was like, yeah, I think it's fantastic. But I, I don't I don't think it's number one like everyone else was saying. Um, I still wouldn't say this is my number one by any means. Um, but I think this is a fantastic film. Very unique. Um, and I, I cannot wait to see what they do with the sequel. And I picked up on a lot more of the, you know, subtle subtleties that they, you know, had that I really couldn't. I had a shitty movie theater experience too with it. So that with that. Yeah, that'd be a movie that benefits from subtitles. Yeah. And that I always have to have subtitles no matter what, let alone if they got thick Australian accents. And um, I really think this movie is, uh, is really awesome, man. And yeah, you know, very unique idea. Uh, these these kids just going out partying and kind of, you know, getting hooked on drugs, but instead they're getting hooked on, you know, talking to the dead, talking to the dead, but being possessed by a demon. They get like a high off of getting possessed by these demons by grabbing a hold of this fake mannequin hand and saying, talk to me and I let you in. And after they let go, you know, if they don't have the candle blown out within 60 seconds or whatever, you know the demon's going to want to stay with them. Um, but once they blow the candle out they're they're like, Oh my God, that felt incredible. So it's a, you know, they're getting like a high off this. And I thought that was really cool aspect. Um, but it, it's just to say, man, that sometimes giving something a re like if you didn't giving it that second chance can really kind of boost your uh, experience or what you might think and pick up on subtleties that you weren't able to, on the first watch. Cause sometimes you're not thinking like, Oh, this is what, you know, right. kind of leads into that. Sometimes you're just watching and just going with the flow. And then, yeah, I, but I really was surprised how much this blew me away on my second watch. And um, yeah, I respect the, the YouTubers that put this out, man. And I can't wait to see the sequel. And it was fun kind of diving into the directors, man, and kind of seeing where they've come from and how big they've gotten, man. So I kind of, give them a, a round of applause just for that to become like YouTubers like me and you to making this huge feature film that uh, picked up by. Yeah. Cause there was a YouTube version of this film. I think there was like a short. I don't know. I think there was a short version of this. The case with the jester, that movie. Yeah. I don't know about this one. I though. think there was a short version of it and then they expanded it. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I'm surprised it didn't make my list to be honest with you, but the, I, that, did, you I might, didn't, you might I did enjoy about it. Smile. Smile had a short film that got expanded. Into I thought this did though too, but you know, it could be possible. I, I'm not right. sure. Yeah, I, I don't. I didn't hear about that because I had watched it, but I know yeah. for sure Smile and um, yeah, but yeah, I, I'll have to look into that. Yeah, it's surprised it didn't make my list, man. It'd be, it'd be, you know, just right below it. I, I did like the movie. I did thought it was good. Yeah. All right, man. Top two coming up to number two. This one's gonna be number one on my list for a while, but it did get bumped down, and that's uh. Our friend Eli Roth back with a big movie this year, probably the biggest horror movie of the year, uh, Thanksgiving. Um, this movie was fantastic. Uh, Eli Roth did not disappoint in this movie. He took what was a joke in Grindhouse and and elaborated upon it and made a really great horror movie. Now, granted, there's a lot of stuff it reminds me of. It does have elements of Scream and, of course, and other movies. Halloween. Yeah. And Halloween. But hey, what horror movie that this day is not going to have that. Exactly. What he does do is he establishes a very good horror he's icon. Do, he's been wanting to do a slasher who done it like Scream right. and Halloween his entire career and he's finally got to do it, you know, 20 years into his career. Yeah. So he established a great horror icon and John Carver. His scenes are great. Uh, you know, all the stuff the, the the kills are fantastic in this movie. Uh, there's great amounts of gore. The whole scene, cooking the woman, I won't forget that. Serving her up to her husband, sticking the hair in her mouth. I mean, some people think he went too far in this movie. I don't think he went too far. Nah. I think, it, it, and it kind of. he could have went farther. It could have almost been farther. But this movie has, will get you by the balls. It has the, the, some of the best 15 first minutes of any movie I've seen this year. The, the whole setup in the, in the store for Black Friday is so good. It could almost be a movie on its own. 
Yeah. And it's a great hook to get you into this whole horror movie. So Thanksgiving will be on a regular rotation now. It's the number one, the best Thanksgiving movie, surpassing them all. And I know it's getting a sequel. That's going to be great. Uh, I, you know, anytime you get a new horror icon, we got Art the Clown. Now we got John Carver. Uh, it's it's saying something. So my number two, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Especially since the, you know we've had the same iconic slashers for the last 20, 30 years, right. and now we're finally getting a couple. Like all the ones that we got, they never stuck. You know what I mean? Like since Michael, Jason, Freddie, and like no any mm. of the new guys never really stuck. You know, um, so it was is cool to finally see that we've gotten a couple of <laughs> Terrifier and John Carver. I knew like at first I was like very iffy, and then once I saw it in theaters, I was like, "This is iconic. This is awesome." You and know? this and the merch for this movie is gonna be huge, just like the Nun was. Uh, everything that's John Carver related, man, it's not coming out to like almost the summer, but it's all sold out. I know. So you can tell this movie was popular. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, I should have I should have worn my my uh, Thanksgiving shirt. Yeah, you have a really good one. My number one is Thanksgiving, man. Favorite movie of the year. I my jaw was dropped to the floor in my theater seat after the first fifteen minutes of this movie. That yeah. opening Black Friday scene, I was like, I'm in heaven, dude. I, cause I, you know, with slasher, especially like, you know, scream slasher movies, they're not very gory or bloody. So this took like scream and threw in that goriness that we love from Eli Roth. And I was like, this is why I've always loved Eli Roth. Obviously we've gotten more goriness from him, like in hostile and stuff. And that's why I say we could have got more for sure. But there is so much uniqueness from him in this. That it's not like, yes, we get homages from Halloween and, you know, this and that. But his kills were all unique. You're, you're chuckling throughout the film when right. you think you shouldn't be. But it's just, dude, he knows how to bring awesome kills and levity at that same time. Um, and, some, and some movies couldn't. Did, but just not as goofy, like with the Victor Crowley stuff where you're right. crazy over the top. Right. Which you get that. But, you know, like, a, I think Adam Greens adds a little bit more comedy in this. But I just thought the characters in this were great. You don't hate any of them. Um, I absolutely loved the whole, you know, finally getting the Grindhouse uh, movie that we've been waiting for since the trailer. And if you go back and watch the Grindhouse trailer for Thanksgiving, he actually kept a lot of stuff. Close. And, you know, yeah, he close. kept it really faithful, um, which I think the guy that uh, wrote the script for the trailer wrote the full script. So it's mm -hmm. like they still kept that same team where it's not like they just veer. And, you know, yeah. this is. And, and some movies and some movies that have such a like, some movies that have such a good opening. It would be hard to top that first 15 minutes. But, man, you know, he, he tops it. He goes out everything. He, he, he betters it. Yeah. The movie gets better as it goes along. Yeah, I thought the twist was fantastic. I I was like, this guy, this guy, this guy, because there's red herrings all over the place. And you're like, yeah. it can't be. It's so obvious. And then, you know, but it is. I thought it was fantastic, man. I had such a blast. I think that John Carver look is, fan, is mm -hmm. so iconic. And I was like, there. I was like, maybe we won't get a sequel. But even if not, I was like, this is so iconic. Like, the, you know. But I was like, we got to get a sequel. But you know what I mean? And it looks like we're getting one. And Eli Roth's still writing it, at least. And, um, I, dude, I just, I think the merch for this is just so awesome. Um, I couldn't be more happy with what came out with this movie, man. And, you know, 15 years later, was it worth the wait? I think so, man. And, uh, well, definitely. I mean, it's, one. It's, it's 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 second on my list, so you know, it's in the top, number one for you, number two it's for so me. So, good, man, it's so yeah. damn good. You know, and obviously, you know, movies. Some of the movies are low on the list. Uh, uh, this man's obviously this was a studio movie. Sony put it out. Had yeah. you know had a big, pretty big budget. So, but but still, I think as a mainstream movie, it did a great job. It got a lot of people that maybe weren't expecting it to be as 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 gory as it was in the theater and i think it it just it just uh gave us a good old-fashioned as good as the 80s horror movie 
on this list this year. So, I mean, it's a great flick. Eli Ross, one of us, man. He loves this shit just like us. He's just fortunate enough to be able to direct. Yeah, and he, does, and he doesn't direct a lot of movies. So when he, he does, does, he makes it he make sure he, a lot more, right, yeah. he puts a stamp on what he does. Yeah, so, yeah, so Thanksgiving, you're number one, man. I can't believe we, we got through this this quick. But my number one uh, was going to be Thanksgiving. It was up there very much until the end of the year. Um, the only movie I think we didn't get to see this year that's coming out next week is that Night Swim by A24, yeah. and that's a PG-13. It could have been good. Maybe it would have been, but yeah, Night Swim came out too fucking late. Or something maybe, but right. it's Blumhouse. But, so, uh, yeah, it's Blumhouse, so there you go. But my number one came out late. It really has, has surged and become the almost the number one movie of the year. It got people in the theater that wouldn't normally go see this type of movie. It it, it equaled and in some respect almost bettered the original version of this movie from 1954, which is, is on the top 100 films of all time. It's a stone classic. And I think over time, this movie is going to become a stone classic because it's kind of an updating reboot. But holds true to the spirit yeah. of the original and that's Godzilla minus one, which is slowly earned like eighty eighty thousand dollars in, in the in America eight where million. eighty million that wasn't even going to be that uh, wasn't even gonna be released and now it's been extended through like uh New Year's it's yeah. done so well. This movie takes everything that was good in the original Godzilla movie talking about war, talking about honor, uh talking about uh, people surviving uh in, in wartime and it just amplifies it mixes everything in it gives us a good story about a family a good story about a love story good family uh, story between friends it mixes the war in and a man who feels unfulfilled to the point where he's going to kill himself that he didn't get to live up to his promise in the war who gets redemption through this uh and then it mixes godzilla in too and it does a great job of mixing him in uh, from the original, from the first scene of this movie where he's just a dinosaur before he mutates to the last scene of the movie, um, Godzilla in this movie, you know, uh, you know, and even even Dylan maybe said to me, you know, is science fiction is horror. This, like the original, is a horror movie. Godzilla is a fucking bad I motherfucker. Forgot, I forgot about this one too. He's, but... he's mean. He he's out. He's a force of nature. He's out just out to destroy. He looks, he looks evil. They got several scenes where he's looking at this movie. He's just, there's one great scene in the movie after he sets off a nuclear explosion with Ray. He's just sitting back and like almost smiling at what he did. But it's, it, you know, we get a nice, we get an ending in this that comes out of nowhere. We do get kind of redemption story. The story is so good. These characters, unlike a lot of movies and Godzilla uh, characters, Godzilla movies, you know, you don't care about the, the movies. You know, the, even the old ones. And especially the new ones that have shit characters and just has turned Godzilla. I don't know if you saw the latest trailer. <clears throat> Godzilla and Kong are running like a million miles an hour. Godzilla can barely get out of his own fucking way. He doesn't have to because he has that ray breath. And they, they've turned into an action movie. And I, I enjoy those movies. But this movie was so good. I mean, right in the opening scene that takes place in World War II and follows through the story of this, this guy for several years of his life where he gets a family, he, he gets uh, on a boat with friends, and how they have to tackle this whole force of nature of Godzilla. Um, it, it's just a great movie, and I've seen it twice now. I, I can't wait to own it and see it again. Uh, a movie that is subtitled, but I don't know how you watch this movie the first time and not have the subtitles because these characters' voices and, and just the whole drama in their voices – Everything you you really need that. Um, it, it's uh, I can't talk high enough about how the the scenes where he's destroying the island is. The, I mean the destruction of this movie is just off the wall. Uh, it, you know it's it, they say the budget of this movie is fifteen million dollars and it's taken over you know one hundred fifty four million got um, worldwide. Uh, it's just astounding. It, it really showed what a good story can do to a genre picture. And this movie is almost going to be like the Titanic of its generation. People don't like monster movies are going to see this movie yeah. for the other story. And, and I just love it. So my number one of the year is Godzilla Minus One. I think I hit the keyboard somehow. So. 
but Godzilla minus one is my number one of the year. Hell yeah. And Dylan, yeah. can you believe we got through under an hour a top ten list? I never thought we'd do it. That that did yeah. that we did a fantastic job. But we got honorable mentions, movies that just couldn't fit on our top ten, and we have top three honorable mentions. And I'm gonna let Dylan go ahead and give his first uh number three honorable mention. Yeah, I I, I kind of wasn't thinking about uh, Godzilla as a, like a straight up run the mill horror movie, but it definitely does have that. Uh, you know, it is a monster movie, so I, I I'd go. And that would probably be on my list. I just kind of didn't think of it, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'd throw God, uh, Godzilla minus one as an honorable mention for sure. But that would probably be my number one honorable mention. But it, I don't think it matters. With no, but give us give us your other three. What what, what three did you have? Uh, or give us one number three honorable mention. Or are we gonna just do all three, or just all no? Five? Do do your bottom third, and then we'll work our way up like the same thing. I got uh, Infinity Pool. Okay, I, cool. That was a good one. Um, at first I didn't really care for it, but I re why I kind of fell asleep the first time watching it. And I, Rewatched it and I liked it a lot more. Very trippy, Cronenberg's son doing it, and you know, right. very different than a lot of the shit we're. Right, right, yeah. but it was good, but yeah, yeah. I think uh, Godzilla minus one would be my number one honorable <laughs> mention for sure because yeah. it, it would be in my top five without a doubt. Right. But I'm thinking of like classic horror movies too. Yeah. I, but I know that is that is definitely got that monster yeah. movie. Uh, my, my number three uh, honorable mention uh, was on Dylan's list. Uh, didn't make my top ten, but it's in my bomb. Uh, third, uh, Scream 6. Uh, I definitely liked it better than Scream 5. Uh, I thought it was a better movie. Love me some Jenna Ortega. Man, she can be in anything. She's fantastic. Um, you know, it, it has it has issues without a doubt. You know, I love the setting in New York. I didn't like the fact that nobody, basically nobody dies. And, uh, and the villains were, were really... Uh, they were great characters until they became villains and then they became caricatures of villains. Uh, but uh, yeah, Scream 6 is definitely my number three in my honorable mentions. I enjoyed it uh, and I'd like to see a part seven. Yeah. So what's your, what's, what's your number two honorable mention? Uh, I go VHS 85. Um, okay. Been getting like a sequel. We've been getting, you know, since they, I think they started – with the 80s or 90s. Yeah, it was like nine of these movies. Nine yeah, there, nine. there's a good amount. But they started off with this new where it was like, it was uh, it started off with like VHS 99, then it went right. to 88, and now we've gone to 85. But we've been getting one on Shutter like every Halloween season. And um, I thought 85 was actually really good. It had a lot of good uh, directors attached to it. Like the guy who did, you know, Hellraiser, the Hulu one, and um, a few other guys. And, um, yeah, I thought it was pretty fun, man. A little short, you know, one of those anthology shot on videotape. Too. They're they're always fun if you like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're a fan of the series, but yeah, that, I thought that was a pretty good one. Cool. All right, my number two uh, honorable mention uh, came out pretty early in the year. I think it was out in May. Uh, is the Pope's Exorcist uh, with yeah, Russell Crowe? That, that one too. Um, I really enjoyed that movie. Once again, another religion movie, religious movie that's loosely based on the life of a real guy. Uh, but I thought uh, Russell Crowe was great in it. His accent was a little wonky, kind of Father Guido Sarducci, but I still thought he did a pretty good job. Uh, I love the uh, I love the the creature in this and the uh, and the whole religious uh, exorcism part of it. So uh, yeah, Pope's Exorcist. Uh, I thought it pretty well. Uh, you know, people seem to have liked it. So it's my number two. What's your number two? You mean my number one? Oh yeah, okay, number one. I forgot where we go. Uh, your number yeah, one. That's the whole time. Yep. Uh, my number one would. Uh, I was almost gonna see this in theaters because I was gonna get a free ticket, but I couldn't like um, do Blumhouse. But I wasn't able to make it because it ended up being on a Wednesday and. I usually go to the theaters on Thursday or Friday, but this was a Blumhouse slasher and the scream homage type thing that really threw me back because um, I didn't think I'd like it nearly as much as I would because I thought it'd be just totally goofy and cheesy, but totally killer ended up being a really fun, like back to the future meets scream slasher movie. Yeah. And um, 
I definitely recommend it. It's on Amazon Prime if you you have it to watch for free. And um, it was fun. It, it was good. I had a blast with it. It's definitely a fun rewatchable one. It's one of those Blumhouse, you know, if you like Freaky and, you know, some of those good, like sillier slasher ones that they do that are a little less tame, but they're fun. I definitely recommend checking it out. Cool. I'll have to check that out. My number one is Infinity Pool. It was on, uh, I don't think it was on Dylan Flew. Was it on your list? Yes, it was on your list, was it? No, no it wasn't. No. no. You what said it? it Yeah, you said it would be. Um, yeah, Infinity Pool is my number one album mentioned. I really like this film. It was it was very different. Um, I thought it had an interesting story. Uh, it delved into some nightmare dreams. Uh, I recommend getting the uncut version so you can see Mia Goth do the get the money shot, uh, which is always good. But uh, I, I enjoyed it. What's that? Love Mia Goth. <laughs> They're gonna say, "Love me some money shot." <laughs> oh, I got the uncut version, baby. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, the old jerk the gherkins uh, version, steelbook. Yeah, so uh, I thought it was an interesting movie. Um, you know, I, I, I love me a goth in it. Uh, I love the guy from True Blood who was the lead guy. Uh, it, it was just good. I mean, I, I just enjoyed it. Um, it was different Cronenberg, and different Cronenberg is usually pretty good. So my number one honorable mention. Yeah. So great. This list in an hour and six minutes, I think we did an outstanding job done. And it, it, there's some really good, great movies. I mean, the, you know, the top five, Cobweb, for me, Cobweb with Evil Lurks, uh, Dark Harvest, Thanksgiving, and Godzilla. Can't ask for better than that, man. It's a great, great year. It, you know, in a year when Renfield and The Last Voyage of the Demeter and None 2 could be down the bottom of my list. Uh, it's just amazing. So. Great year. I don't know what 24 will hold. I know we got a lot of good movies coming out. <clears throat> and we're continuing to get stuff on Screenbox and and uh, Shudder and stuff like that. Peacock, Hulu. Uh, so we're going to get some good stuff. It's probably more Predator movies are coming and Alien series is coming. Movie. So uh, your final thoughts, Ed Dylan, what you thought 23 and, and, and what, what if anything you're looking forward to in 24. Yeah, just a good year. A lot better, a lot better than a lot better than twenty twenty three. A lot of good shit for sure, man. Yeah, twenty twenty two was a great year. I thought twenty twenty three even bettered it. So exactly. Yeah, so just can't wait to see what twenty twenty four comes. I, I don't really know of much honestly because of all the strikes. So we'll see. Right. But right. hopefully we get a, another. Yeah, good but fortunately, year. so many of these movies come up from from independent studios that we might see a few. You know. Yeah. If not for the Hollywood stuff, we'll see the in the pen. So, man, thank you for coming on. This is great. We finally got done. Uh, wanted to be bringing this top 10. I really had great time talking about these movies that we all love seeing. Oh, we yeah. all watched during the year. Because usually if you go see something, I go see something. It's usually in my wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. Very few things that I, I didn't see that you saw. So Exactly. Yeah, and, and even a movie like The Blackening, which came out this year, that was a good movie, did make my list. So yeah, yeah. I mean, there's that, some, not, that got like a high ass Rotten Tomato score too. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of good stuff that came out that didn't even make the list for me. So just shows you what, what a good year is. Yeah, you know, we got some great stuff coming in 24. Dylan's gonna be kicking that off with some Dylan horror shows in a couple of weeks, and uh, all sorts of good stuff coming up. We're gonna do some movie reviews. Hopefully, me and my boy Dylan, we got more Bond coming out. Uh, just dropped Moonraker. Dylan will be dropping that soon, and then we'll be doing For Your Eyes Only. I'm dropping shorts all the time. Dylan and I will hopefully be doing some live streams together, oh, yeah. and uh should Without be a good year. Yeah. should be a good year. Yeah, I hope we get some another good year with horror. Without a doubt. I look forward to those alien, that Alien movie from Fede Alvarez, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And we'll hopefully do another Predator uh, movie soon, too, because I, yeah. I loved Prey. That was a great movie. Yeah, I hope um, we get a sequel to that Hellraiser from Hulu. When did Prey come out? Did Prey come out this year or last year? Oh, bro, that, that's been out. Like, that was out last year. Okay. That's right, 2022. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Time time flies. Maybe even 2021. It just, yeah, guys. We feel like that because you got the, the steel book finally. Right, yeah, it took a long time for that to come out. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for, for coming on tonight. Appreciate you spending a little time uh, 
doing this because uh, I had fun okay, doing you it. Know, I was looking for we went to we went to see all these movies you know every week so we had to review them. That's right. We reviewed a, a lot year. of them. Great, it was year. great, great doing the ones that we didn't review. At least talk about them a little bit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, hey, well, thank everybody for coming in. Everybody that's watching in the premiere in the chat, uh, I'm glad you're doing that. Stay tuned on Dylan's channel. We're coming up for more stuff in 24. Look forward to me dropping some more shorts all the time. And until then, I want to say happy horror 2023, man. It's a good year. Horror, horror days. Hi right, guys, we'll catch you later. Happy New Year, y'all. Peace out.